Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the beast and the great apostate movement of fraudulent righteousness. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the same and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So we have Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, we know is the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. It's how these people have been evaluated by Holy Father God just prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ as they are manifestly declared to to be inhabited by antichrist and thus they have the mark of the beast and they are not fit to meet the husbandman at the second advent so revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 is the great great apostate movement that draws all flesh into a fraudulent manifestation of righteousness it's apostasy that unites civil and ecclesiastical power. We know the beast that appears here is full of the names of blasphemy. We understand to be the image of the beast, which we understand to be, uh, in majoritarian in nature, a civil power. And we understand the harlot that appears here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, to be representative of an ecclesiastical power that is yet in her sins that is unfit to meet the husbandman at the second advent of Jesus Christ, which is paralleled in the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13, where five are wise and five are foolish, and the five that are foolish, the glory of God withdraws from them, their lamps go out, and they are yet in their sins, and they do not have the seal of God. They they are not fit to meet the king in the air and to reside within the holy city. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It's cognizance of God's goodness and presence. And the seed is the word of God. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. And I put here Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the seed is the word of God, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It is planted in the heart, and watered with faith, to produce of harvest. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29, the kingdom of heaven is as, if, is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And we know that the ground that's depicted here is the heart of man. So we see, we see, uh, we see this civil and ecclesiastical union is represented by, represented in Revelation chapter 17, verse one through six, as by this union of this beast and the harlot. So the administration of the beast is made manifest by the image to the beast, that is the corporeal body of flesh and closest spiritual proximity to the appearing of Antichrist that appears. As, as the names of blasphemy in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy. And it's depicted, we've, we've been discussing in previous lessons, that it's depicted as the names of blasphemy that is the manifestation of its ministry as it drinks in of the kingdom of Babylon within their fornications. So the administration of the beast is made manifest. The administration of the beast is made manifest by the image of the beast. That is the corporeal body of flesh in closest spiritual proximity to the appearing of Antichrist 
that appears as the names of blasphemy in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, that solicits the, the worship of death, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God. So the image of the beast solicits the worship of death, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, and it pours out the spirit of Antichrist. Romans chapter 3, verse 13, we understand to be the complete spiritual transfer and process of the anointing by the words, the, the, the words that the image of the beast is given power to speak in the sight of the beast to captivate all flesh as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist. Romans 3.13, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips. So this is the this explicates the, the complete transfer of the spirit of Antichrist from the image to the beast, which we know has the, has the mark of the beast, the seal of Satan in predestination. Romans 3.13 gives us the full transfer process. Their throat was an open sepulcher. It's an invitation to serve hell and death. With their tongues, they have used deceit. There's the poison. The, it's, it's the lie that's concealed by, by that's, it's, it's, uh, it brings nothing. It's poison disguised as lemonade. The message that the image of the beast brings, uh, uh, pro proclaiming liberty and uh, to you know, people that it's it's laboring to captivate is nothing but a lie. We know that uh, uh, that Satan's greatest tactical advantage over man is to conceal himself within a position of righteousness, and this is what is occurring with the ministry of the image of the beast, as the image of the bre the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist. Their throat is an open sepulcher. It's an invitation to serve hell and death. With their tongues, they have used deceit. the The message that they bring is the worship of death concealed in a fraudulent cloak of righteousness. And the poison of ass is under their lips. And finally, the transfer is complete. The spirit of Antichrist has infected the blood of those that are being ministered to by the image of the beast. So the image of the beast solicits the worship of death, Revelation 14, 9 and 10, and pours out the spirit of Antichrist, Romans chapter 3, verse 13. Anointing the blood of its victims, Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, we see the entire kingdom of Babylon, not just the harlot. The, the golden cup is in the harlot's hand, and the golden cup represents the kingdom of Babylon. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made the, all, the, all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken over wine, therefore the nations are mad, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 6. So we understand that the image of the beast is also drinking in of the spirit of Antichrist and that it has the seal of Satan in predestination. And it goes, its ministry is to go to the entire world and anoint the entire world with the spirit of Antichrist. And this is what's depicted as the harlot is drinking in and disseminating not only within within false apostate Christianity, but within civil powers. The ministry of the image of the beast is to take, we know the ministry of the image of the beast is made manifest by promoting and promulgating ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers and taking organized crime and what I believe is the form of a religious tax to ecclesiastical powers. So we know absolutely the image of the beast, the harlot's not the only person drinking in. The harlot is the not, not the only power that's drinking in as ecclesiastical power of the spirit of Antichrist. The image of the beast is, well, I personally believe, primarily drinking in of its desire for its fornications with the world. So the image of the beast slits so the worship of death, it pours out the spirit of Antichrist, and it anoints the blood of its victims. Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And this is depicted, this is depicted here as, as people that knew better, people that were standing and at one time were cultivating the fruits of righteousness and magnifying the glory of God in their lives. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, and the word of God says, if the righteous are scarcely saved, where does the sinner and ungodly appear? Okay, so it's this is very, this the, the, the ministry of the image of the beast is a disastrous, a disaster for any democracy and any government trying to maintain control 
with and maintain the presence of Holy Father God within the constitution of their population. So the image of the beast is anointing the blood of its victims, Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, as it labors to captivate all flesh with the seal of Antichrist, the mark of the beast, in predestination. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 through 31, where we see King Belshazzar, because he, dr he drank out of the golden cups that were stolen out of the Jewish temple from the Jews, he was judged by God, and judgment was rendered in full upon him as God declared the mark of the beast in predestination upon him. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. And that very, lot, that very night, his life was required of him. And that was the judgment. That was the manifest presence of God as God rendered judgment upon King Belshazzar, the Babylonian king, and required his life of him that night. So we know absolutely that, that the ministry of the image to the beast makes manifest the seal of Satan within our, our, our world. And makes, it makes manifest the seal of Satan paves the way for the appearing of Antichrist. The seal of Satan appears in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, and the appearing of the beast appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. So this predestination with the, the mark of the beast that, that fell upon King Belshazzar was was way premature. I mean, we know that every single person that does not receive the seal of Satan, um, excuse me, the seal of Holy Father God, will not rise up to meet the Lord in the air. Okay, there's no, there's no, everyone from from ages past and present, that and the people that live through the final moments of Earth's history, as they make perfect the seal of Satan and incorporate the seal of Satan in the constitution of man, they make perfect satanic criminal psychopathology for everybody that rebelled against the glory of God that has ever lived in the history of our world. So this this the 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 seal, the mark of the beast, the seal of 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 the mark of the beast was declared upon Belshazzar in in predestination by Holy Father God, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting, and his life was required of him that very night by Holy Father God, and his kingdom was given to, I believe, Darius the Mede. So, we know that the image of the beast is laboring today. The image of the beast had not appeared. We know the first incarnation of the beast. The, Daniel's captivity in Babylon was about 500 B.C. The first incarnation of the beast lasted from 538 to 1798 A.D., which appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 10. And the image of the beast does not appear within the first incarnation of the beast that I'm aware of anywhere in, in sacred scripture. The image of the beast, which is the administrator of satanic captivity, for all flesh to receive the, the seal of Satan and the mark of the beast in predestination, the ministry of the image of the beast does not appear until the second incarnation of the beast in sacred scripture in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. So the image of the beast is, the image of the beast is the administration and mediator between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 18, 1 Timothy 6, 10. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world, the less of flesh, the less of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the less thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, this is the last time, as you heard the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. 1 Timothy 6, 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So, the image of the beast is the administration and mediator between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist, 1 John 2, 15 through 18, 1 Timothy 6, 10. And we have, we have here the, the abode of blasphemy that is apparent as the image of the beast drinks in of the spirit of Antichrist and its desire to fornicate with the world. 
the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life as the motive for the image of the beast selling its soul to Satan to reap a harvest, an illicit harvest that it's incapable of, of, of reaping as a natural man in the glory of God, as the glory of God resides in the United States Constitution today. We know that the motive for the image of the beast was just is a manifestation of its administration as it labors to capture all flesh. It, be, it labors as the mediator between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist. It's making manifest by its words its own captivity as it goes to all flesh and it promotes it promotes uh, monetary monetary and and sexual advancement as the motives for its own its own seat in the kingdom of, of of Satan, the kingdom of hell and death are made manifest in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, as it labors to create the union with the harlot that's arrayed with gold, precious stone, and pearls. So the administration, the very administration and of the, the image to the beast between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist is the manifestation of its captivity and its seat in the kingdom of hell. It's making manifest its own captivity as it labors to capture all flesh where with the very seal of Satan that it has it has in predestination been captivated as it's the motive for its selling its soul to Satan is revealed in Revelation chapter 17 verse 3 and 4. So the image of the beast is the corporeal body making manifest the church of Satan, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, for such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. We know an angel is a messenger, and the light is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, and 6 and 7. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Here we have, we have the declaration by Holy Father God of the ministry of the image to the beast. First and foremost, I believe, because the ministry of the image to the beast is the seal of Satan in predestination that takes and promotes and promulgates ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers and takes organized crime in the form of a religious tax to ecclesiastical powers to make manifest the seal of Satan within the constitution of man in its full operational capacity and the fullness of its numbers. So the ministry, we have the church. This is the church. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15 gives us the church of Satan. It's the church of Satan that is made manifest by his ministers, which are, I personally believe, first and more, foremost, it appears as people that are in closest proximity spiritually to the appearing of Antichrist, which appear as the names of blasphemy within the interior of the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. So these are the labors that captivate all flesh and service unto the image to the beast illicit desires on pain of death. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Okay, that's an amazing passage of scripture. So we know the image of the beast is laboring to captivate all flesh in service unto its illicit desires on pain of death. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26. And we know this administration, this ministry of the image of the beast is is... The lineage goes back to the dragon, Revelation 13, 4, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, like, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him. The lineage, the spiritual lineage, is then transferred uh, from, it's transferred from the dragon to the beast, and the beast makes, ma makes manifest this ministry through his image. 
that the Revelation 14, 9 and 10, and the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God. So the administration of the pouring out of the spirit of Antichrist upon the entire world goes from the dragon, the dragon brings forth the beast, and the beast summons his image as the corporeal body, the administration of death for all flesh in our world to capture all flesh on pain of death to serve the illicit desires of the image to the beast. So the image of the beast is laboring to to. So we know the image of the beast is lab. These are labors. the The pouring out of the spirit of Antichrist that the image of the beast is making manifest today, soliciting the worship of death, are labors to captivate all flesh and service unto its. The image to the beast solicit desires on pain of death. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26. The seal of Satan makes this very absolutely crystal clear where we have the, the corporeal appearing of the image of the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship, the image to the beast should be killed. And what we have here, we know that we have as the ministry of the image of the beast is made manifest by its motives for sexual and monetary control on pain of death for all flesh, we have the very administration of this, the kingdom of Babylon. And it's being made manifest by the image to the beast as the image of the beast labors for civil and ecclesiastical union to, to obtain power to summarily execute all flesh that will not render service unto it without discretion and without love. 1 John 4, 16, for God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. So the image of the beast is laboring to captivate all flesh in service unto its illicit desires on pain of death. This is the church of Satan. It's the ministry of Satan. The Bible makes this absolutely crystal clear. And, that, and to be captive in the kingdom of Babylon in service to the image to the beast, Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14, where we have sin reigning in people's mortal bodies as they obey it in the lust thereof, and the dominion of sin is, appears. To be captive in the kingdom of Babylon in service to the image of the beast, Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14, is to receive the mark of the beast in predestination and is in truth captivity to the will of one man and one man alone, the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Okay, so this captivity on pain of death to serve the image of the beast as the image of the beast labors for civil and ecclesiastical union, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, as the seal of Satan resides within its heart in predestination. This captivity is actually, as manifestly declared by Holy Father God, is captivity to the will of and it's, it's Babylonian captivity, and it's captivity to the will of one man and one man alone, and that's the beast that appears. Once the seal of Satan comes into the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity, we have the appearing of Antichrist in our world. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So guys, I just want to say that that with what's going on with with uh, civil powers today, we're all witnessing. We're all unfortunately having to witness the pain of public executions. People that are being summarily executed by the image of the beast, without any pretense of judgment, justice, or righteousness. And all manifestation of iniquity, transgression, and sin, Romans chapter 7, verse 4, 12 through 14, wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, just, and good, was then that which is good made de death unto me. God forbid sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me. These horrible public executions that we're all having to witness are, uh, and these manifestations of iniquity, transgression, and sin is the will. This is the will of one man and one man alone. And the Bible 
makes it very clear that that man is the beast, the king, the Babylonian king, none other than the Antichrist. And his children, the image of the beast, are making manifest their ministry to captivate all flesh on pain of death. And this is why. This is why they're doing what they're doing. They're, they're, actually, they're rolling out the red carpet for the appearing of their king. And they're t attempting to, to captivate all flesh in lawlessness and the manifestation of the seal of Satan that resides within their own hearts. They're, la they're laboring to make manifest the son of perdition, the son of lawlessness that Paul speaks about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. For any, for any body of people in the United States to claim that they are, they are immune for sin, for iniquity, immune for iniquity, transgression, and sin, that, is, my friend, is the highest form of treason and blasphemy against Holy Father God. It's a claim to, to immortality without the presence of God, and it's a claim to be a God and to be a God in your own right as you're claiming vertical de it's a claim to vertical detachment and of uh, and no accountability towards holy father god and that's exactly what we're witnessing when we're witnessing public executions to make manifest the ministry of the image of the beast so the image of the beast can reside in iniquity transgression and sin with horizontal immunity in the kingdoms of man and amongst the flesh of men so and this is exactly what Paul speaks about when he talks about the appearing of Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. The ministry of, of Jesus Christ is ended in the heavenly sanctuary, and those that had rejected the word of God and the Son of God and the glory of God through Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ are vertically detached. Let no man deceive you by from 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 being able to cultivate the fruits of righteousness and magnify the glory of God, the ministry of Jesus Christ has ended in the heavenly sanctuary, and mercy and grace is no longer being imputed upon people that have not manifestly declared and labored to make manifest the glory of God in their lives. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of of lawlessness. He's the one that is captivated with his seal and predestination and put the desire for the ministry of the image of the beast to be made manifest with the seal of Satan and into democratic societies to clear, to roll out the red carpet for his appearing by by the ministry of the image of the beast, which will leave dead bodies everywhere, okay? And so, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of lawlessness, horizontal, vertical detachment from, glo from the glory of God. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 15. The son of lawlessness, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, so he, he this exalting above all that is called God is the fraudulent manifestation of righteousness, or that is worshipped is can can be also the small scale interruptions that iniquity, transgression, and sin. Because we know the platform of Antichrist is that of the final solution. The final solution that will sterilize the environment to clear a pathway, leaving, leaving the dead as fraudulent cloak of righteousness conceals death in the temple of God. And the ministry of the image of the beast is made manifest and by, by, by sterilizing the environment to clear a pathway for the one that is the, the abode of Antichrist and the abode of death, the resident of death that has been the, the, been residing 
uh, uh, without the glory of God, that the abode of a lie that, that was the causality for all iniquity, transgression, and sin that caused the fall of, of all flesh within our world. Okay, so sterilizing the environment, the platform of the image of the beast is that, uh, excuse me, the platform of Antichrist is that of the final solution. It's to, it, it, it claims that it is coming to sterilize the environment so people do not have to witness all the, all of the, the iniquity, transgression, and sin that appears in, in crime and sin against God within our society. Okay? But the ministry of the image to the beast is nothing but a lie. It's nothing but a lie. It's to make manifest the worship of death in fullness, and it exterminates every single natural manifestation of, of crime and sin that appears within the public consciousness to roll out the red carpet for the appearing of Antichrist. And it is, it is the, the ministry of the image of the beast is the fulfillment of the, the kingdom of Babylon, the kingdom of darkness. Because all the, all it does is make horizontal immunity by, by civil declaration of people that are captivated within and that are with, by the lie of the, of the ministry of the image to the beast. All this does is make manifest the full manifestation of of the worship of death that exalts itself above everything that is worshipped. Okay? And that's not what's worshipped in the kingdom of God. That's what's worshipped in the kingdom of hell and death. Okay? So it claims as it sterilizes the environment and it, it prevents the population population from retaining cognizance of the seal of Satan that resides within its own soul, it is actually, in actuality, as the bodies pile up, it is, in a sense, it's rolling out the red carpet and making the pathway clear and safe for the beast to appear in our world. That's exactly what it's doing. As because it's it's worshiping death, it's pouring, it's soliciting the worship of death today. It's pouring out the spirit of Antichrist to captivate all flesh and predestination with the seal of Satan, and it is promoting itself as the final solution and exalting itself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that He as God can come and sit in the temple of God, proclaiming himself that he is God. So the beast in his image is the dragging, the dragon, making manifest death's residence in its highest occupation. Okay? Let me say that again. The beast and its image is the dragon making manifest death's residence in its highest occupation. And that is, in predestination, the seal of Satan until it comes in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity as manifested by Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. So we know the image of the ministry of the image of the beast as it solicits the worship of death and it pours out the spirit of Antichrist. It's, it's taking ecclesiastical fraud and it's promoting and promulgating ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers and it's claiming that it is the final solution for all manifestation of unrighteousness that appears within our world as as men are men are captivated as prisoners of Satan with by in violation to the 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 civil authorities okay so the, the image of the beast is actually proclaiming that that As it, as it promotes public executions without any pretense of judgment, justice, or righteousness, it's actually promoting itself as the final solution. Because everyone knows that 
if you go into Walmart and you steal food and you're going to be executed summarily for that, nobody will go into Walmart and steal food. Okay, and the image of the beast is smart enough to know that. So the ministry of death that is being promoted as the public executions continue to increase in number year after year by the image of the beast, it's in actuality, it's rolling out the red carpet, and it's exalting itself above everything that is worshipped in the kingdom of hell to make manifest and to clear a safe path passage for the beast and the appearing of Antichrist within our world. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Jeffrey Leone, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.